Parents, take the time. Be involved in your children's lives. As we observe Parents Month, we encourage you to spend quality time with the little ones. Yes, providing financial support is important, but being involved in their day-to-day -day lives is equally vital to them becoming useful contributors to Jamaica land we love. Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Andrea Chisholm. On the show today, we'll hear from the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse about how important it is for parents, guardians and communities to play an active role in the safety of our children. We'll also look at how government is helping youth realize their dreams. Those plus other information are wrapped up in today's magazine. Stay with us. Be an active participant in your child's life. Spend time with your child. No phones, no television, no distractions. Just the two of you. Just the two of get to know your child through play. Why not go to the park and get on the monkey bars? Sharing a meal can also be a time of bonding. If your child's in school, be involved in school activities. Speak with your child's teacher. Follow up on their progress in school and see how you can help. Assist them with homework. Attend parent-teacher meetings and support school fundraising events. Remember, your child's future is in your hands. Safeguard it. So glad you are a child of mine. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, November 23. 40 female wards of the state aged 18 to 21 years old are to be housed in Jamaica's first transitional apartment complex. This follows Friday's groundbreaking at Lady Musgrave Drive in Kingston. We have to ensure that we do all we can to assist our children to transition from innocent, secure childhood to wholesome, fulfilling teenage years. We also have to facilitate their progress into becoming responsible, successful adults. That is a mission in which we dare not fail. The $1.45 million transitional living program is a collaboration involving the Child Development Agency, USAID, UWI Open Campus, Caribbean Child Development Center, and the Social Welfare Training Center. Construction will start in January and should be completed in a year's time. Over the two-year period that the girls will be living at the apartment, they will be exposed to skills training, mentorship, and job opportunities. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller said the USAID and other stakeholders had pledged to replicate the program in St. Elizabeth for 40 males in state care. The UWI Open Campus also announced that it would be offering one-year education scholarships for 30 female and 15 male wards of the state. Residents of Gregory Park St. Catherine are now benefiting from a $15 million community resource center. Opened recently, the building was constructed under Phase 2 of the Community Empowerment and Transformation Project Comet. It's funded by the United States Agency for International Development. The resource center boasts an office for community development officers and spaces for civic events, business enterprise activities, and community-based policing. It also has water catchment facilities, solar panels, environmentally safe waste disposal, and disaster risk reduction equipment. It is a worthwhile initiative, and I am very certain that you're going to be very proud of this resource center. So I'm very pleased that this space has been made available for the police to be here and to reassure and to serve and to protect the residents. Comet 2, which targets 25 communities in Kingston, St. Andrews, St. Catherine, Clarendon, and St. James, seeks to build the capacity of communities to prevent crime and other social issues. Government is undertaking a combination of measures to deter persons from stealing electricity across the island. These include the imposition of a $1 million fine and imprisonment for persons found guilty of electricity theft greater public education campaigns, and the implementation of technology so that persons cannot breach the power systems. But very importantly, the government has recently established Nissal. It's a new company that will continue to provide rural electricity, but also to engage in providing infrastructure 
in various communities where the activity of theft is prevalent. Energy Minister Philip Paulwell says the measures are guided by the new Electricity Act, which seeks to provide a modern codified system for regulating the generation, transmission, supply, distribution and dispatch of electricity. Minister Paulwell was speaking during a recent CARICOM Energy Week school tour at the Harborview Primary School. Expectations are high for the planned liquefied natural gas hub on Jamaica's south coast. Industry Minister Anthony Hilton says the LNG hub will be a magnet for ships passing through the expanded Panama Canal. The U.S. government's decision to permit the shipping of LNG to Jamaica is indeed catalytic to the revival of Jamaica's status as a maritime state. The minister made the remarks at the recent Leadership Dialogue and Colloquium Forum. It was staged in partnership with the U.S. Embassy, Futures Forum and the Institute of Caribbean Studies at the University of the West Indies. Government is targeting international financial services, bamboo, the creative economy, medical cannabis and hemp as growth areas to fuel Jamaica's economy. We believe that these industries will be the source of future investment. These investments are also facilitated with the knowledge that they will create opportunities for our MSMEs and entrepreneurs to provide support services. Industry Minister Anthony Hilton was speaking during a business forum to mark Global Entrepreneurship Week. And finally, the Caribbean Maritime Institute CMI is being lauded for its approach to training Jamaicans based on industry demand. Transport and Works Minister Dr. Omar Davies gave the commendation at a ceremony where 120 students graduated from the institution with certification in logistics, shipping and industrial engineering. 95% of the graduates have already been placed in jobs. The CMI, in its own way, is showing the direction in which tertiary education must go in terms of not training persons, certifying persons, and hoping that somehow they'll fit in, but certifying persons with a specific objectives in, in mind. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamar McHale. Thank you for watching. Family, school, church, community, all important agents of change in our society. They influence what we think about ourselves, our surroundings, and how we see the roles of males and females. Let's all work together for equality for all Jamaicans. Let's make Jamaica a place where both males and females have equal access to a good education, good jobs, the best health care, and opportunities for the good of the country. Males and females are different, but it doesn't mean they're not equal. Let's build a Jamaica that doesn't discriminate. Become, Become an, an agent, agent of, of change. Catch up on last week's engagement from the ministers in the office of the Prime Minister next. Coming up in Jamaica House Weekly, government caters to girls leaving state care. Prime Minister thanks European Union for $2.3 billion in budget support and civil servants recognized. With stories from the Office of the Prime Minister, I'm Simone Wolf. Ground was broken on Friday for the island's first transitional housing facility for 40 18 to 21 year old female wards of the state. The program has many dimensions, including the provision of skills training, living accommodation, mentorship, employment opportunities, services for addressing the social needs and concern of residents. Construction of the 20 room facility on Lady Musgrave Drive in Kingston will start in January, with the girls to occupy the space in a year's time. The $1.45 million US dollar transitional housing program is a partnership involving the Child Development Agency, USAID, the UE Open Campus, the Caribbean Child Development Center, and the Social Welfare Training Center. At the groundbreaking, the UA Open Campus announced that it would be offering 45 one-year scholarships for wards of the state, with 30 going to girls and 15 to the boys. It was also revealed that the USAID was in discussions to create a similar transitional living program for 40 young male wards of the state in St. Elizabeth. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller, meanwhile, had words of commendation for the educational performance of some wards of the state. They continue to do well in their CAPE and CSEC exams, and I'm very proud of them and hope that they will continue to 
to aim higher and higher. On November 17, the Prime Minister signed an agreement with the European Union for the disbursement of two budget support payments totaling $2.3 billion. These payments are being disbursed because my administration has consistently met the economic targets agreed with the EU. Furthermore, I believe these payments represent a vote of confidence by the EU in the government's successful implementation of the economic reform program. $1 billion will go towards the island's debt reduction and growth program, while the remaining $1.3 billion will be used to improve the lives of people in sugar-dependent areas across the island. The signing also marked 40 years of Jamaica-EU partnership. Before Tuesday's signing, Prime Minister Simpson Miller met with the Director for Latin America and the Caribbean at the European Commission. The two spoke of deepening cooperation between Jamaica and the European Commission in the areas of justice and development. As the island recognized civil servants all last week, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller also showed her appreciation to the men and women of the public service. At an awards ceremony at King's House Wednesday, Mrs. Simpson Miller issued some of the 331 awards to public servants who had given 25 years of service or more to the island. Word came last week that Cabinet had approved new boards for the Western Regional Health Authority and the University Hospital of the West Indies, following the en bloc resignation of the previous boards. The appointments became effective on Tuesday, November 17, and they will serve for three years. The Western Regional Board is being chaired by hotelier Tony Hart, while businessman James Moss Solomon will chair the UWI Hospital Board. In a statement, Cabinet said the boards were given the latitude to co-opt persons who they deemed necessary to advance their mandate. And the Cabinet extended best wishes to Member of Parliament Dr. Ken Baugh, who underwent a successful surgery on November 13 at the University Hospital of the West Indies. The members of the executive said they looked forward to Dr. Baugh's complete and speedy return to good health. On Friday, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller congratulated reggae girl Sharona Forrester on being selected as the 2016 Rhodes Scholar. Mrs. Simpson Miller praised Sharona for being an all round student who not only excelled academically but also was an exceptional athlete. Sharona will be pursuing a master's degree in economics from Oxford University in England. And the minister responsible for information, Senator Sandra Faulkner, represented the prime minister at a church service to launch International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Senator Faulkner told the congregation that government was collaborating with key stakeholders to tackle the issue. A joint select committee of parliament is reviewing four key pieces of legislation to provide greater protection and redress to vulnerable women and girls. These include the Sexual Offences Act, the Domestic Violence Act, the Offences Against the Person Act, and the Child Care and Protection Act. The elimination of gender-based violence and other forms of violence against women and girls is central to the government's commitment to the safety and the security of all our citizens, particularly the most vulnerable in the society. International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women is observed this Wednesday, November 25. And that's it for this week's Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next time when we bring you more of the stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister.
Put it now, go to nothing. But of course, when you leave it on, it burns excess energy. Oh, a sec, go? Yes. Okay. Did you know that the country foots the bill to import the fuel that produces electricity? Let's all play our part to conserve on energy by ironing once per week, unplugging all appliances when not in use, and avoid keeping the refrigerator open for a longer period of time when removing food. Get smart. Don't get left in the dark. Last week, we brought you excerpts from a message Youth and Culture Minister Lisa Hanna gave to our young people about the safe use of social media. This week, we're targeting parents. As it relates to the parents, the guardians, the people who are in charge of us when we are not at home. We need to understand that under the Child Care and Protection Act of 2009, you have a duty to report. So the informal culture, forget it. Right? You know what I'm talking about. You don't want nobody to come call your name. Once you become a guidance counselor, once you become a teacher, once you're a parent, once you become somebody in society, and if you tell me you're not getting involved, it means that you are not complying with the law of the land. And just this week, I had a situation from a particular high school where we got information that a particular student sent a text to a particular, another student. I sent two of my young detectives there. They found the young miss. We spoke to her, but of course, the situation was not conducive to, you know, to investigate. And so I sent a text to the mother. I don't know the mother, but I believe that if you send a text a little bit more private and calling her at the office and she's talking. So she responded. I identified myself to her. And I said to her, I need to see you and your child in the morning. She said, why? I said, because I have some information about your child that I suspect she's been abused and I do not want to talk to you on the phone about it. Can you come? She said, yes. I saw her online. I said, um, I'm here, where are you? She said, I can't come. I have a meeting at nine, and I'm gonna have another one at one, and another one, so I can't come. I said, okay, all right. So I will make the time, I will come for you. The other, the next morning at 8.05, she was at three root Ven road, because I was going for her. Because since, you do, since your child is not important, the meetings are more important, then I will come to you. And when I come to you, based on how I look, they all figure out that I'm a cop anyway. So I'm saying to the people who are prescribed persons, please understand that you have a duty to protect these children, backed up by Sissoka and all the other agencies. And if you don't do it, there are sanctions for your behavior. <music> I say be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Parents, keep your children safe and protected. Stay alert and be aware of where your children are at all times. Submit the latest photo of your child to his or her school. 
know what's happening with your child. Listen to them when they say they don't feel comfortable going to a certain place or being around certain persons. Act quickly. When your child tells you he or she has been touched inappropriately or approached with unwanted requests, be the change. Help us protect our children. For more information, call 1-888-776-8328 or 1-876-878-2882. Government is steadfast in its determination to provide an environment in which all Jamaicans can reach their fullest potential. The program we're featuring from the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is doing just that. Have a look. The fact that I'm working from home allows Christina to help in different ways and, you know, I teach her to um, different um, section or parts of the operation. If I'm on the road and um, I get a call to say, look, um, Mr. Kelly, I've sent you an email, um, would you expedite? I would call, um, if she's here, I said, look, go on the computer and um, look up this particular email. Open it and, you know, ask for certain specification. Like, I'm working with my father. He called me and said, I will open his emails. So when I read the emails that I get it from a client, so here I read it, and it said 36 by 24, and you want it. And when you want the way, how much copy you need, he make it. If he make it, he deliver it. 24-year-old Christina is a student of Genesis Academy, and she has Down syndrome. But this condition has not stopped her from living up to her abilities. Just take a look at all she accomplishes in her spare time as she helps her father in his reprographic business, which focuses on architectural and engineering support services. That's partly due to the assistance father and daughter have received from the Ministry of Labor and Social Security through its agency, the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities. They are the beneficiaries of a Disabilities Economic Empowerment Grant. The Economic Empowerment Grant has been around since 2009 um, and uh, it came out of a concern of the disability community. This economic empowerment grant, as the word states, is to empower the person economically so that they can manage themselves, you know, and, and, um, and their families. Many families have benefited from the grant. And to reach even more, government has increased its budgetary allocation from $15 to $17 million annually starting in the 2015-2016 fiscal year. $10 million of that will go directly towards offering grants to persons with disabilities and the remaining $7 million will fund the purchase of assistive aid devices. A person applies for the grant and the application is reviewed here at the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities and it is taken to a subcommittee of the National Advisory Board on Disabilities and that sub subcommittee reviews the application uh, based on a social report that would have been done by a social worker of the JCPD who would, would have visited the site that the business is supposed to be taking place, visited the home, you know, do, do a socioeconomic uh, um, assessment of the individual with disabilities to, to see their capability of managing the project. To begin the application process, you should have a business plan or already be operating a business like the Kellys who needed the grant for their business after a fire burned down their previous establishment, forcing them to move the business to their home. I came to know about the, um, the empowerment grant um, based on a previous um, support I got from the foundation. So having learned, I went um, physically and got an application, filled the application out, state what I was, what if I am successful, what I would be doing um, with the grant. 
And in this case, I had a piece of equipment which would assist me greatly in my operation. And um, it was down and needed repairs. So I made the application and was successful. As in the case of Christina, a parent of a child with a disability who is also working in their business can apply for this grant. A parent can also apply on behalf of his or her child with a disability if that child is running his or her own business. For an individual, the grant funding can be as much as $150,000. Groups of persons with disabilities along with able-bodied persons may also apply and group funding may go up to as much as $450,000. In order to apply for the grant, here are the requirements. You have to have a disability, first of all. You have to be registered with the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities. For persons doing the business, you must have a business plan. Um, you must have your TRN um, and the business owner from which you are purchasing or the, the supplier from which you are purchasing they must have their TRN also. If you're successful on your application, then you'll need to do a compulsory business training exercise which is done in partnership with the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC. This exercise is to help approved applicants with basic money management and business management practices, as well as other skills needed in the successful execution of a business. So after they, they have gone through this training, then they can begin their project and the, the, the social workers of the JCPD right across the island for, does follow up to ensure that the project is, is going well. We encourage the persons in a group or individuals to, to register their business after a while. You know, the business is going well after the training and all of that and um, they, they should register the business. They are also encouraged to ensure that they are contributing to the national insurance scheme so that when they retire, they can benefit. Christina, like so many other beneficiaries, has been empowered to make a meaningful contribution to society, all because of this grant. She shares some of the highs of being able to work. I love to do blueprint. Working with my dad, I feel much better than before I am working with him. To get an Economic Empowerment Grant Application form, visit the nearest National Insurance Scheme NIS office across the island or go to the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities head office at 18 Ripon Road in Kingston. There'll be a better tomorrow 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 There'll be a day There'll be a way There'll come a time to sing A brand new song tomorrow and that's where we draw the curtains down on Jamaica magazine but only for today the show will return round about the same time tomorrow on this station if you have internet access, we are at your fingertips. Visit our website, jis.gov.jm, or join us on Twitter, Facebook, or download our mobile app from the Google Play Store. Until next time, I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.